Hey everyone, Omar Kazarski here, Creative Director of Bauer Web Solutions, www.bauerwebsolutions.com, and today I'm going to show you a quick technique to uh, photo retouch uh, someone's headshot, kind of clear up any blemishes they might have, and just make them that much more attractive. I'm going to open up Photoshop here, and if you can see here, I have a photograph uh, open of a young lady. Uh, it's very, you know, it's attractive, but she has a little bit of, you know, imperfections in her skin, blemishes, pores. In essence, she's human. She's not, you know, photo retouched to the nth degree like a lot of the photo mo of uh, supermodels you see in the magazines. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, just, you know, fix her up just a little bit um, to bring out more of her uh, beauty. Traditionally, photographers will, um, in the past, what they would do to kind of get that soft angelic glow is they might put a piece of cheesecloth or Vaseline on their camera lens, you know, to kind of get that effect. And we're going to, in essence, do the same thing here. So right now I have my Photoshop document. It doesn't consist of any layers currently, just this one background layer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and I can do that very easily by clicking and dragging the layer by its name on top of the new layer icon this little piece of paper icon looks like a little piece of paper with the corner folded over here in the bottom right hand corner of the layers window itself and I release and now I have a duplicated layer so what I like to do is I like to double click on that layer name and give it something more to script than the default name of background copy I'll call it blurred image because in a moment we will be blurring it so I type in the name I want to give to that duplicate layer and I hit enter or return so the computer knows that I'm done typing so now with that layer active I need to apply a blur to it so I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur so if I go to the filter menu down to the blur section and straight across and over about five choices down in the sub menu to Gaussian blur Gaussian blur now depending upon the size of your image and the resolution of the image you're dealing with you'll need to do different settings you know some of you might need to use more or less um, you know that would be too much I would think this would kind of be too little you want to find a a setting and I'm looking here either at the the thumbnail preview or if I have preview clicked on here in my Gaussian blur setting I can actually see the effects before I commit to it on the actual image itself so I'm looking to create a blur that'll just obviously it's throwing everything out of focus right now but I'm just looking at her skin tones to see if it's just blurring it just enough to get rid of those little minor imperfections and inconsistencies so I'll do say like in this case a radius of four that looks good for me and I'll say okay what I need to do now is with that blurred layer still active I need to remove uh, selected portions of that layer so what I'm going to do is I'll use my lasso tool to start off with which is three rows down from the top on your toolbox the toolbox should be by default located on the left hand side of your Photoshop screen and I'm going to select just large chunks of the background here with my lasso tool and I'll delete it hitting the delete key or that is to say the same key as the backspace key would be on a typewriter that is the delete key that I'm referring to so I'm just going to select these large chunks of the background for starters here so if I looked at my layers here, if I hide the background layer by clicking on its corresponding eyeball to uh, disable its layer visibility here within the layer window, I can see that's what I, I have currently. So I'm going to continue to um, erase portions of that blurred layer, so let me bring the background layer act uh, visible. The blurred layer itself is still active. I'm going to use my eraser tool here and a little trick if I wanted to increase its size I could hit the right square bracket key each time I do that it's increasing its size or if I wanted to decrease the size of my tool I could hit the left square bracket tool so the two keys I'm referring to are those two keys to the immediate right 
of the letter P as in Peter on your keyboard. So hitting those back and forth is a quick and easy way to change your uh, size of your tool, whether it be the eraser tool as I'm currently using, or say your paintbrush, or rubber stamp tool, uh, what have you. Uh, another trick too is changing the intensity of how uh, strong the effect that tool applies, or that is to say the tool's opacity. Higher opacity, more of a full effect of that tool, lower opacity, a lesser effect. So although I can certainly change the opacity of my tool by going up to my properties panel and, and changing the opacity here, a little trick that I like to use instead of using the slider bar is simply using the numbers on my keyboard. So for instance if I hit the number th 3 it goes to 30. If I were to hit the number 7 it would go to 70. So hitting those keys, you know, one would bring you to 10% opacity, two would give you 20, three would give you 30, so on and so forth. You know, eight would be 80%, nine would be 90%, and then hit zero, that would be 100. If you're a good typist, if you type two keys, one after the other, fairly quickly, you can go to a very specific opacity. Let's say you wanted to go to 56, or let's say like 50, 3%, something really bizarre. If I type in 5.3 on my keyboard, it goes right to the opacity of 53. So what I'm going to do here is with my um, eraser tool, I'm going to change it back to 100% opacity so I get full strength of that tool, and I want to erase all of the blurred area within her hair because we don't need that to be out of focus. You know, because again, we're 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 the goal we're trying to get here is only to have certain very specific areas of the image to be out of focus. So um, I'm also going to erase the areas of her shoulders and blouse there. And I'll go over here to the bottom left hand side. I'll do the same thing. I'll erase the blurred areas there of her hair. So we want that to. We, so in essence, we're erasing those specific areas of the blurred layer to expose the background layer underneath it which is still in focus. Okay. So now I can change the size of my brush. Remember uh, that technique I showed you by hitting the left square bracket. I can very quickly go down in size here so I can kind of get in here get these wisps of hair. So right now I'm not touching her face at all. Just getting her earrings, so on and so forth, the other side of her face here. Okay, so now I want to lower the opacity a little bit. Maybe I'll do something like a 50% opacity for that tool and maybe lower my brush size a little bit. I just want to erase maybe her jawline here just so that defining edge of her face comes into focus a little bit more. Uh, little wisps of hair over here erase the blurred area of that layer where her necklace is. And now I want to start focusing on some of the features of her face here. So I'll very carefully kind of just erase a little bit of her eyebrow and her eye. Bring that back into focus. Same thing here with her right eye and her right eyebrow. So I can see the details of her eyelashes and pupils. I'm going to erase a little bit underneath her nose so her nostrils are a little bit more defined and perhaps a little bit on her laugh line here. And then finally, her lips. Like so. And maybe I'll lower the opacity a little bit more and just do her teeth with a few a couple of passes here. All right. And there we go. So if we look at the blurred layer by itself here by turning off the visibility for the background you'll see what we have here and maybe just a little touch up work here let me just get rid of this extra stuff here so you can see in essence what we're left with is we just have the blurred areas of her of her skin left over so I'll go back to my background layer and activate that and there's the final result 
So at this point you can flatten your file, your Photoshop layered document or PSD file, and there you go. One last thing that I'll do for you here is I'm just going to duplicate this. This is not a required step, but I'm only doing this for the purposes of showing you a before and after here. So on the right hand side we'll keep the modified retouch version and on the left hand side I'm going to hide the blurred layer so you can see the difference. So on the left hand side is what she had before and the right hand side is now her just kind of retouched but still you know giving her that you know very soft healthy look alright so hope this helps you if you have any questions feel free to drop me a line you can contact me at bauerwebsolutions.com alright so look forward to other techniques uh, Photoshop and Illustrator coming in the future